First, there's the rattling, then the squealing, and then there's the embarrassment about your poor performance. <laughs> These are all symptoms of driving my car. Just kidding, sort of. But they are also symptoms of a broken GPU cooler. And we're gonna show you guys the red green way to fix it. HP's new Omen X lineup comes equipped with Intel's 7th generation Core i7 processor. Check it out at the link in the video description. We'll be attempting to fix broken fans on both a rear exhaust blower style GPU and an open cooler style GPU with our samples being this GTX Titan X and this Asus GTX 1070. Both of them are actually working just fine by the way. They was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you've ever tried to do something like this, you've probably noticed that replacement parts for video card coolers pretty much aren't a thing, even for extremely common ones like Nvidia's reference heatsink. So we're gonna take a basic, off the shelf, reasonably high static pressure fan and examine how close we can get to the original one's performance. But first, a disclaimer. Doing basically anything we're about to show you will void the warranty of your GPU. If you pull out one of these, you're basically done. This guide is really intended for the graphics card that's a couple years old now, but is still performing well enough that you don't want to upgrade yet. If you still have an active warranty, get the manufacturer to fix it for you instead. Okay then, so with that out of the way, the exact tools that you'll need for this job depend a little bit on what kind of GPU you have. Some of them can be fully disassembled with just a small Phillips head screwdriver, while others will require a full iFixit kit or similar. We also recommend though, having a magnetic parts tray, uh, some thermal compound, some compressed air, a couple zip ties. Uh, yes, this will be one of uh, those kinds of guides, as well as, I don't know, maybe some duct tape, a uh, fan speed controller, and uh, some hot glue. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of those kinds of guides. Let's start by getting some initial readings. First, we want to know just how much of a difference it actually makes when your GPU fan stops spinning. So, we just need to taper up like that, and then the real show begins. And in a huge surprise to no one, with no airflow, the performance of these cards <laughs> absolutely tanked. The Titan X went from a silky smooth 135 to a cinematic about 25, and at a core clock of 400 megahertz is basically unusable, while the non-reference design 1070 did fare a little better, even in our torture scenario of simulating the death of all three fans at once. It throttled to one gigahertz and about 90 FPS after a half an hour, a testament to both the efficiency of Pascal and the clear value of this larger heatsink. Though with that said, it's obviously still unacceptable performance, so it's time to fix it up. Start by removing the shroud. Generally speaking, a policy of, you know, remove any screws that look related and take lots of pictures while you go is a pretty safe bet here. From here, you'll need to unplug any lighting and power leads, remove the fans with a bit more unscrewing. So we just got five screws there each. Then, oop, there's some tape. Uh, yeah, more tape than I thought. Yeah, yeah, and boom! You got yourself a bare heatsink. We're gonna secure our new fans with some zip ties. That's right. Making sure, of course, to use decent ones so that they don't melt under a high load or get brittle and break over time. 
I think this will work a lot better than stock. This really wasn't quite what I had in mind for this one. Next, we need to power our fans. Looks pretty good, hey? Normally, the easiest way is to run the cables to your motherboard or to a fan controller. Go ahead and do that. Boop, just like that. Now, you could reuse the original fan header on your graphics card, which would allow you software control in your GPU overclocking dashboard. But it should be noted that some GPU fans are very, very power efficient and the header might not be designed for something a little more power hungry. So there is a chance that you could draw too much from it. As for the Titan X, we've actually thoroughly covered the pain in the butt disassembly process for this guy here. So we won't go into too much detail now, but what we didn't show last time was how to remove the screws holding the fan in and extract the fan with a little bit of muscle and some help from a heat gun. Okay then, now that the fan is out, you can put the shroud back together and then attach the fans using the same technique that we did last time. One thing that I would suggest kind of adding to the uh, technique from the previous card though, is some means of sealing around your fan. So you've got a couple different options for that. Um, hot glue would be one, uh, maybe some kind of a, of a double-sided, like a foam tape. Uh, but we're gonna go with good old fashioned tuck tape. Okay. Not bad, hey? The results ended up being a bit of a mixed bag. Um, so the ASUS 1070 actually exceeded even my fairly optimistic expectations. We ended up boosting to 2038 megahertz, giving us an extra five frames per second in crisis versus the original three fans. And we reached a maximum of 58 degrees Celsius. So honestly, especially considering that we didn't even have to take off and replace thermal compound to do this, I can't think of a good reason not to do this to any GPU that you can easily take the shroud off. This freaking rocks. As for our other card, that one was a little disappointing, especially given that this is a mod that I have personally performed in the past. We ended up reaching a maximum of 91 degrees Celsius and only about 600 megahertz on the GPU. To be clear, that's better than no airflow at all, but if you're running a very high power GPU, you are either going to have to get a little bit more creative about your cooling, uh, perhaps removing the shroud altogether and you know, attaching the fan directly to the fins would help or using a much, much more powerful fan, or you are just going to have to take it on the chin and order a full cooler off of eBay. If you know iFixit, you know they really like taking stuff apart and teaching people how to fix things. They're constantly posting teardowns and repair videos for popular devices like the Galaxy S8, the iPhone, and the Nintendo Switch, and they're leading the charge in electronics repair. Whether you're looking for a hard to find adhesive seal to put something back together, uh, or a weird bit for your screwdriver so you can take something apart, iFixit has probably got it. And their iconic black and blue toolkit, the ProTech toolkit is now only 60 bucks. You just throw it in your bag and you are ready to fix pretty much anything. It's got suction cups, it's got prying tools so you don't like scratch stuff as you're trying to take it apart. It's got ESD safe tweezers, it's got tons of hard to find screwdriver bits like tri-wings and security torxes. And the best part is that it's backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. So check out the 25,000 free repair guides over at iFixit.com and then buy yourself a ProTech toolkit for just 60 bucks so you can start repairing your own devices. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.